Good morning. This is the Committee of Adjustment meeting for the Township of South Algonquin. I'd like to call the meeting to order. It's nine. Oh, I just lost the time on the screen here. 9.02 or 9.03. Uh, there's an agenda before us. Are there any additions or amendments to it? None noted. Can I get someone to adopt the agenda? I'll move the motion to adopt the agenda, Richard. Thank you. Can you get a second? A second of a uh, moved by Councillor Florence, second of a uh, Councillor Harper. Does anyone have a pecuniary interest to disclose? None noted. Uh, the, the minutes before uh, of the previous meeting were circulated. I'm not sure whether we're going to pull them up here or not, but does anybody have any uh, corrections or additions to them? Hello? No, you, you, I just took it off. Right. It's Kevin. Hello? Yes. No, I just got a question. Is this just, is this one just for the property severance or is this for the uh, deeded laneway through the property too? Are we doing that all at the same time or is that what's going on? No, we're going through the agenda right now. And this is, we're just uh, going to uh, review our previous minute, uh, minutes. That's part of the process. Oh, okay. Previous okay. meeting. And, right. uh, then we'll go through the, the various steps. Okay, all right. Uh, there were no corrections or additions noted. Okay, could I get a mover to uh, to accept the min minutes? Bongo, I'll move it. Moved by bon uh, Councillor Bongo, seconded by- I'll, I'll second. I'll Councillor second. Collins. Councillor Collins. Thank you. Okay, this is a public hearing and uh, to consider consent application C2022-01. And I would like uh, to turn this over to uh, Tracy Cannon, our planning and building administrator. Good morning, everyone. Thank you. Um, I just want to do a, a roll call of who is in uh, attendance for uh, public members that are in attendance for the meeting. Um, if I could start with um, some of the applicants. Kevin, could you yeah. just state your name and, and who's with you? Kevin Balesdead and Gord Yule. Okay, and uh, Ms. Taylor, I see you're online as well. You'll be representing um, for both parties today. That's right. I'm just here to speak on either application if necessary. Great. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. So I'm going to give you a bit of a background. This is a, a, a we're having two at the same time. Um, um, so they're, they're together, so to speak, but different applications. So the first one um, is C2022-01 is for a lot addition and easement. And the second one is um, C-2022-02, and it's just for an easement. And Brian, if I can get you to go to page eight of the agenda, and there's a map that uh, describes, it's pretty good to describe what is going on here. So <clears throat> what's happening is um, both properties are at the end of Wolf Lake Lane, and there's going to be a lot addition to the blue property on your screen, which is the the uh, sev or sorry the uh, lands to be added to the property that is in red is being added to those properties from the retained, and in doing so, they've requested an easement to go over both um, pieces to act for ex access reasons to the retained lands. So I will go back. After that has been explained, I will go back and we'll do the public hearing for the C-2022-01. So Brian, if I can get you to go to um, uh, page seven, and then we'll start this, this, that one. So this portion of the meeting, um, 
of the committee adjustment is to consider the consent application for a lot addition and easement under section 53 of the Planning Act uh, for lands described as parts lots 28, 29, concession 7, and part lots 28 30 through 31, concession 8, and the Lyle Ward. So the application requests consent to sever approximately uh, 40.47 hectares from their five or 226 hectare holdings and add those severed lands to the abutting lot of dish, the, the lands, the benefiting lands of 66.7 hectares. And that land is legally described as concession seven, lot 27. The applicant also, also wishes to establish a formal right of way over the severed land to benefit the retained land. So the requirements to hold the meeting is that there must be 14 days notice uh, as prescribed under section 53.5 of the Planning Act. No notice signs were erected due to the road um, to the subject property being only accessible by a believe right now snowmobile. So we didn't put the signs up, but notices were mailed to property owners within 60 meters um, on January 28th. Any comments uh, from the planner were outlined in the uh, planning report that everybody received in their package. And I just wanted to reach out to the committee members to see if um, anybody had any questions or familiar with the lands or had any comments in regards to this application. Uh, it's Councillor Florent here. Uh, Tracy, you might remember last fall, I think it was when somebody reported to me about a gate on Crown land. And after a little bit of investigation, we found out it wasn't a gate on Crown land, it was a gate on this property. Uh, and they were claiming that they had cut off access to a lake, which they did not. Uh, so I am familiar with this area. Uh, I haven't been on the private property. I've only been as far as where the gate is, where it turns from crown to patented land. Uh, but I am familiar with the area. Great. Uh, anybody else have any comments? The committee? Councilor Richard. Bongo here. Go ahead, Bongo. Oh, thank you. Uh, yeah, I, I had emailed uh, Tracy just a few questions. Uh, just with regards to the the status of Wolf Lake Lane, and uh, it seems like the owners are responsible for maintaining that themselves, uh, and uh, also uh, the the land is landlocked as well. Uh, so it's a pretty unique uh, piece of property, uh, and uh, those were the biggest questions that I had, and they're all uh, expertly answered. And and it seems like uh, any future developments would would primarily be more like a hunt camp or like you said, a low residential development as well. And, and those were my main inquiries. And, and, and like I said, yeah, they, they were expertly answered. Thank you. Yeah, so these are, this is essentially, we're not creating any new lands. Uh, we are simply um, adding lands to an additional or to an existing lot. Um, all requirements through the planning or through the building code would need to be, or building code and zoning bylaw would need to be applied or complied with if they propose to develop it. Councillor Shall, I believe you had a question or comment? No question. I've, um, I'm familiar with uh, adjacent property owners uh, to this property. And uh, so I'm familiar with the area in, in a sense. It's certainly a rural area and a very nice location. So uh, anyway, that's all I have to say. Great, thank you. Anybody else? Okay, we'll move on. <clears throat> I did receive a written response from an adjacent property owner who had no object objections to the application. Um, no agencies that were circulated the notices had any objections or concerns. Um, I believe Kevin and Gord, um, as the owners, and, and Ms. Taylor, feel free to time in as well, if you have any questions or comments in regards to the application. Hi, hi Tracy, uh, Courtney Cleverton here. Um, I'm actually the owner of the, the other property as well. I'm oh, wait, owner. sorry, thank you. <laughs> yeah, sorry, I, I, I missed my chance to chime in there when you were doing a roll call, so, but yeah. That's okay, yeah. I'm glad you made it. Yeah, yeah, uh, and, and just so everybody knows, like our plan for this property is just recreational use. We're just gonna be using it for 
for hunting where you have no plans to develop it. Okay, that's great. Tracy, I have one other comment. Uh, I'm just wondering, I know it's a rough sketch of where the, the uh, right of way is going to be. And I'm just wondering, uh, I imagine the owners will establish exactly where the, the crossing is going to be of the, of the water system so that, um, that when they survey it, it will be all in line because it's likely crucial that they get across that uh, green section or the, uh, the old green section, I guess you should say, so they can actually, uh, I guess Cleverton can actually, uh, uh, Courtney there can ac access his property. So uh, in the future. I, 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 can, I can comment to that. It's Courtney here. Um, there is an existing, an old, there was an old trail that went and crossed the creek there where there used to be an old wooden bridge. Um, and we, we're using the exact same area. So it, it is well established where the crossing will be. Okay, good for you. I just want to point out one error on that map to it. You can see at the bottom end of the map, it says Moore's Creek that runs alongside the Wolf Lake Road. That's not actually Moore's Creek. Moore's Creek is up above. That's Coughlin Creek or Coughlin Creek. Great. Does anybody else have any comments? No. Okay. We'll move on. Any more comments uh, from the committee on hearing none? So it is recommended the committee of adjustment provide provisional um, approval for the consent application um, for C or C2022-01. And that uh, up the application be approved provisionally with the following conditions that the applicant provide the township with the original executed transfer deed, a duplicate original one copy, a copy of the reference plan to be to be deposited in the land registry office that is substantially in compliance with the application sketch and a schedule describing the severed parcel and naming the grantor and grantee attached to the transfer for approval and payments of all municipal legal and planning fees associated with the processing of the application. If applicable, that the applicant meet all financial requirements of the township, including payment of the balance of any outstanding taxes, including penalties and interest be paid. I now call for a motion on the decision for C2022-01 as read by myself. Can I have I'll a- make a, I'll make a motion to approve the application. Thank you. Can I have someone- I'll, I'll second it. I'll win it. Councillor Shala. And I will now call upon a vote. Councillor Bongo? Four. Councillor Collins? Four. Councillor Florent? Four. Councillor Harper? Four. Councillor Shala? Four. Accepted with the conditions. Okay, thank you. Okay, so now we'll move on to um, 5.2 on the agenda, which is the public meeting for um, C2022-01, um, Ewell and Blaston, sorry. <coughs> um, so this portion of the meeting, meeting of the Committee of Adjustment is considered a consent application for an easement under section 53 of the Planning Act for lands described as lot 27, concession seven, Lyle Ward. Um, the application requests municipal or <laughs> request uh, consent to create a 20 meter right of way over the subject property extending Wolf Lake Lane existing Crown Road to continue to provide legal registered access to the retained lands under the previous consent application we just saw. So, um, Brian, if I can get you to go to page um, 12 would be great, please. Okay. 
So as shown on the previous, previous map, um, with the lot addition in there, it doesn't show it here, but this is basically the easement that'll go across. It'll connect into the easement that was on the um, severed lands and then carry on to the retained lands. And the requirements to hold a meeting is, is the 14 days notice. Um, no notice signs were erected due to the road to the subject property not being accessible in the winter. And the notice of signs were also mailed on to property owners within 60 meters on January 28th. Comments from the planner are outlined in the report. And do any committee members have any comments on this application? The only comment I would like to make is that this is actually, I'm not, I never measured it, but I would say it's at least 10 kilometers from this property out the Wolf Lake Road to Highway 523. And it's essentially a logging road. So it's at the whims of the weather, whether it's able to be drove on or not. Sometimes it's washed out. Sometimes it's not. Uh, actually, it's in pretty good shape right now because the loggers were just in there. But it will deteriorate as, as the use goes down. So I just want to make sure that everybody is aware that the township would not be responsible for any maintenance whatsoever on that because it is a lane that's correct yeah so it'd be the responsibility of the um the users of wolf lake lane or the property owners um to to maintain that the township will not go in there and maintain it parts of that road is also uh atv trail and or a snowmobile trail in the winter time mm -hmm. any other comments So no comments from the public were received and no agencies that were circulated the notices expressed any concerns. Um, Mr. Ewell and Mr. Um, Balesden, do you have any comments? Yeah, um, so I guess my main concern about this easement is say uh, Courtney ever goes to sell the property down the road and we come into some conflict with the guy who buys the property and he turns out he's a real ass, I guess is the way to say it. So what happens then? Are we able to take that back or is this just give, like, is this done deal? That property is no longer ours or how does this work? That's my, I just want to understand how it all works really. I think that's a great question for Adrian. Would you like me to address it now or uh, Kevin and yeah. Gore, we can talk later, whatever you prefer. Wait, well, we can talk later too. It doesn't matter really. Or now, it doesn't matter. I don't care. Get it over with. Okay, so the, the property is yours. You you will continue to own that entire piece of property. The right of way is just the neighboring property's right to use that lane. Um, and that right of way will exist with the property, uh, not with the owners. So it will continue to exist after you sell the property, after Courtney sells the property. Um, so no, you would not be able to ever put a gate up and block anyone's access uh, or the, the access of the, the neighboring uh, owner, uh, even if you didn't get along. Uh, so it's just their right to use the property. Um, but again, it, it's still yours. Okay, so I guess, I guess my concern is that like uh, Courtney and them guys are fine. They're pretty, they're pretty decent guys in that, but I'm just worried, like, I don't know if he'll sell it, whatever. But is there some legal action I could take that if, uh, Somewhere down the road, the guys that do end up buying that property or whatever are real, you know, it's a big problem. Is there some legal way we could go about it or no? No. No. They they have the right to use the right of way. They don't have the right to use any other part of your property. So they have the right oh, okay. to drive across uh, that uh, surveyed laneway, whether it's right on the, the logging road or you end up putting it somewhere else. I, I don't remember exactly if the, the drawing we have follows exactly the, the road, um, but it, do, it doesn't give them access to the rest of your property. It purely means that they can drive across that road to access their own. Uh, and you cannot take away that access to them once the easement is granted. Okay, all right, no, this, that's fine. This, sorry, this uh, brings up another question um, in regards to maybe some agreements that maybe should be put on this so that, um, both owners are know, know what 
it's expected of both of them who's going to maintain that easement, who's going to, you know, if there's a tree down, who's responsible for cutting it. Um, I don't know what thoughts are on that. I'm pretty sure that we're just going to take care of it together. Like it's no other him or me. We'll, all of us will be involved in taking care of it, I would think. I would hope so anyway. Yeah, we, we, we certainly will, you know, uh, I think Kevin Gordon and I have a pretty good relationship, so I, I don't see any issues. And we have no intention of selling the property. So I guess you never say never, but um, yeah, I, I, we've been working together pretty good up to this point. So I don't really see us having any issues going forward as far as maintaining the road uh, in a joint fashion. And the respective road owners do have an obligation to keep the easement clear. Um, so they, they would kind of, uh, under their own obligations, be responsible for their own section of the right of way. Okay. So what you're saying is that me and Gord are responsible up to their property and then their road is their problem type thing. That's right. Okay. No, that's fine. That works. And this would carry on to any future, um, property owners. Correct. That's correct. Yeah. Okay. 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 We're good. Yep. I believe Mayor Dumas had uh, a comment. Um, I'm just not sure. Am I allowed to make a comment because I'm not a member of this committee? I usually sit in just to hear or meet the people that are going through this process, but I do. Am I allowed to make a comment? I can't there. see why not. You're a member of the public. <laughs> okay, thank you. Um, I think the the owners, and I, I'm pleased to meet you virtually, um, and, and you alluded to this, Tracy, I think there should be good wording. I think good wording makes good neighbors, no, no matter how collegial you are right now, you don't know what the future holds. And I think some wording to, to make this a solid agreement. And my other point is that Wolf Lake Lane takes off of 523, am I correct? That's yes. right. Yeah. And it passes through Crown Land before it gets to this patent land. Correct. And you know that we have uh, lots of people coming into South Algonquin now that travel highway roads and go off on side roads. So you cannot, this cannot be blocked when it comes off of 523 either. So I'm just saying to you, I have a laneway of 300 meters and I have people coming up my driveway. So um, once, you, you know, we have great interest in South Algonquin, people are coming and looking and um uh, just don't be surprised if others than yourself are using this road. I hear it's part of an ATV and a snowmobile trail, but as it goes into Patton land off of Crown land, I don't you think you should uh, not expect to have people traveling that road. And I think, uh, yeah. again, I, I agree. I think wording should be in there to make this a strong agreement uh, amongst the neighbors for sure. Thank you. Thank you, Mayor Duma. Anybody else have any comments? Hearing none. So I think um, the committee should maybe discuss um, if they feel that an agreement should be added as a condition. Um, to, you know, to the application. I'm not sure it, it actually would go under both, I guess, because um, just thinking here, because it's going to apply to the other when once the lands are transferred for, to the lot addition. So I think, um, I don't know what the committee's thoughts are on, on that because, or Adrian, if you can if, chime in on this as well, that would be great. I'm not sure, sorry, what kind of um, agreement we'd be looking at, kind of an agreement between the neighbors or agreement with the township about them not being responsible to maintain Wolf Lake Lane? Because that might be a good idea to include a, an agreement like that, that it's a, a private road and the, the township is, is not under any obligation to maintain up to the private property. Uh, but between the neighbors themselves, um, I'm not really sure what kind of agreement we would put on title to, to those properties uh essentially if things you know do go 
you know, they don't get, get along with the, how, who was doing what on the road. They, we just don't want them to come back to the township and say, you granted us this easement, you granted us this consent application and do something about it. We're not getting along. I just want to make it clear that we're not going to be involved if mm-hmm. something does go wrong. Well, we, we could do a, a private road agreement, I suppose, between all three parties. Um, and then it can be registered on, on both properties and just involving, I mean, b- between the neighbors, we, we can't really control what private citizens do, but um, I mean, we can remove the, the township's obligations with that agreement, which is probably the, the biggest concern on for your behalf. That's correct, yeah. Do I have any committee members that would like to speak to that? I'll try I think these are, uh, if I could, Tracy, uh, it's Richard. Mm-hmm. I, I think these are pretty standard in across our township, uh, these easements. So, uh, and many of them were farmed prior to uh, amalgamation and the townships being organized, so to speak. So, I just feel that it's the responsibility when it stops at the at the property line. Our actually our responsibility stops out of five twenty three, and uh, it's entirely up to them. And I don't think, even though it's an easement, I don't think I have the right to go across that green line if I'm ATVing. And I would assume that they would have a gate there, and someone can tell me whether I'm right or wrong. But I'd say the yes, easement yes. is between two properties and. Uh, what they do and how they maintain it, if they have a good relationship. And, and you know what, if you start it all out before something happens between the two of them and it's put on title, I think that's the best in the long run. So that's all I have to say. I'm in complete agree- agreement with uh, Councillor Shala. It's only an easement. The easement only concerns the uh, two property owners. It does not concern the public and it does not grant the, the public right to travel on the private property. That's correct. Okay. And, and I, it's Councillor Collins here. I, I think we have to get away from these two people. Um, I think the easement is on the pieces of property, um, not on the people. And once we go to land registry, and that is a registered right of way or a registered easement, it goes with the property not particularly with the owners. And I think this is important. Once it's on the property that there is an easement or or a deeded right of way across it, then it stays with the property. Um, Whether they sell down the road, whether or not they give it to relatives or, or people inherit from them, it stays with the property. And I think this is an important statement. It isn't really about the two people involved that own it at the moment. It's actually the lots of land as they stand and, and one will have an easement across it for eternity once we've, uh, once we've agreed to this today, if we do so. Thank you. Thank you. Councillor Bongo, did I see you have your hand up? Uh, yeah, I did. Uh, that, it, it's, a, it, it's a really good point, Tracy, because uh, in my short time of being on council here for just over three years, there, there have been uh, a whole bunch of times when, when private residents uh, approach the township about problems between neighbors on private property, such as an easement situation like this. And uh, it turns out that we actually don't, don't have any control or jurisdiction over conflicts like that. So uh, I, I think it's very important for all of the public to understand that especially when easements like this are being created. Uh, and uh, as, as, as Adrian stated, uh, it's, it is mainly something between the private residents. So, so I really do encourage the private residents. Uh, it, it sounds like you're excellent friends, uh, although it, I don't think it would hurt anyways to have a private agreement uh, amongst each other. Uh, of course, in that case, should something happen in the relationship, then you have a written document to refer to, uh, and above all, all else, if, if any of the properties are sold, then at least there is something written down uh, that, that a new property owner could refer to uh, as a starting uh, list of agreement rules. But uh, anyways, I'm excited for, for this application to go through, and, and it sounds like it's going to be uh, really good for all parties. Okay, so... 
I guess. Brian, do you have any, yeah, I was gonna yeah, just go to I, you. Do you have any comments? Because with your past like, yeah, experience, and I, yeah, <laughs> no, I, I think I think Adrian's kind of hit the nail on the head with this one. Uh, mm -hmm. It is very common as conditions of consent or private laneways are created uh, or acknowledged and recognized uh, on title uh, that there be a private roads agreement created. Uh, I've done uh, numerous private roads agreements over the last 25 years. Uh, and they do uh, take away uh, the issues down the road when property transactions occur. There's a clear and concise agreement as to not only who's maintaining it, but when I get mad at you because you um, did something I don't like uh, and that tree falls across the road and I refuse to cut it uh, on my property, there's something in writing that uh, somebody can address. Uh, that doesn't involve the municipality, uh, that they have other repercussions for. Uh, so yes, uh, private roads agreements are quite common and uh, they are a tool uh, to assist not current owners who are friends, uh, but to assist future owners um, in, per uh, in perpetuity. Great, thank you. So, I guess the consensus I'm getting is that a condition should be added for the um, two parties to enter a private roads agreement. Um, I think that has nothing to do with it. No, it doesn't. <clears throat> the, an easement is an easement is an easement. That's all we have to do is grant, grant or not grant the easement. The question, are we able to have a vote or something like that? Because I see the value of a private roads agreement as a very minor condition. Uh, and ultimately, if I'm the only member that thinks that way, then that could just be recorded in the minutes in the form of some kind of vote. Um, okay. uh, May I um, just interject quickly? Absolutely. Uh, when, when I discuss a, a private road agreement, I think it would be more important about dealing with Wolf Lake Lane if you wanted to have one. Uh, between the two individual uh, owners of the property, uh, the, the land registry office is kind of picky on what you can register on title to the property. So they may not uh, allow for us to register an agreement between the two landowners uh, about who's clearing the, the driveway and whatnot they could independently enter into a, a written agreement uh, that's binding on any future owners of the property that wouldn't be registered on title. Uh, but if we're talking about a, a private roads agreement, I would say that that would be just between the township and the, the landowners, just about Wolf Lake Lane and maintaining that up to, uh, that they're not responsible for maintaining that up to the private road uh, because uh, it's true, an, e an easement is an easement. There are obligations that arise with an easement. There are obligations that they're required to keep them uh, free and clear. You can't block an easement. You have to remove anything that uh, is blocking an easement. So all of that obligations are created within the easement itself. Uh, the private road agreement we just be dealing with, in my opinion, would be Wolf Lake Lane. And if the township wants to protect themselves um, and just to make sure that they would have no liability if someone were to crash on Wolf Lake Lane or if uh, hit some ice or if it wasn't plowed, anything like that, um, then at that point we could discuss a, a private road agreement. But in terms of who's looking after the easements, I think that that just is created with the, the obligations are created with the creation of the easement itself. Um, I don't think that any kind of formal agreement that's registered on title is necessary between the property owners themselves. Okay, great, thank you. Um, Councilor Harper. Go ahead. Um, I don't see why the municipality should be concerned or involved with any of it. Uh, the Wolf Lake Lane is on Crown Land. We don't have anything to do with that. And once that easement starts across private property, that's nothing to do with the municipality after that. So I don't think we should be involved in any of it at all. There should be no liability for the township or, or anything else to do with the township. Okay, so how about we go, um, I think, like Adrian said, with the easement, um, it kind of takes care of itself because it's registered, untitled, and there, there's um, rules behind an easement 
if I've understood correctly. But as with the Wolf Lake Lane, um, I think maybe private roads agreement might be beneficial for there as well, that they're not going to expect us to, to maintain that in the future. Um, and like Adrian said, liability. So did you want to take a vote on that? I, I think one of the challenges yeah. there, Tracy, is that it is in fact Crown land and I didn't realize that. Uh, I so thought of we, that too. After we, we, have no, we have no jurisdiction over Crown land. That's provincially uh, uh, a provincial issue. Uh, so we wouldn't have the ability to enter into any types of agreements on provincial lands. Right. Hi, Tracy, it's Richard. I think we're muddying the waters here. I yep. think we're here to vote on whether we're going to agree with this um, easement and the rest of it doesn't bother us. There's a whole, there's a whole number from what you've just mentioned of parties involved. Here's the MNRF, there's uh, the snowmobile club, there, uh, possibly there's even an ATV uh, association. So uh, I, I don't think we want to get involved as a township at all. So uh, I think we're just here to vote on this, uh, whether the, we're going to agree with, with this easement and move forward. And you know what? An easement and an agreement between the two parties is better down the road for all of the, the those parties. But that certainly has absolutely nothing. I don't feel uh, involves our township. Okay. And we're, I, so I would say uh, we move forward here. Okay, so I'm getting a consensus that we're not going to request a agreement. So I'm going to go ahead and read the, um, the approval then. It is recommended the Committee of Adjustment provide provisional approval for the consent application with the following conditions. That the applicant provide the township with the original executed transfer deed, a duplicate original and one copy, a copy of the reference plan to, do, to be deposited in the land registry office that is substantially in compliance with the application sketch and a schedule describing the severed parcel and naming the grantor and grantee attached to the transfer for approval prop purposes, payment of all municipal legal and planning fees associated with the processing of the application, if applicable, that the applicant meet all the financial requirements of the township, including payment of the balance and any outstanding taxes, including penalties and interest be paid. Discussion, I guess I should ask discussion first because this was, uh... okay. Tracy, um, Go ahead. Has, the easement been, has the easement been surveyed? Are there survey markers along that easement? Because I think that has to happen before it, it goes to land registry. It, 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 well, like this, they will have to have a survey, and we'll yes, get the okay. plan. And before before it's before it's approved, like we have to see the the uh, easement. Okay. All right. Thank you. So I now call for a motion on the decision for C twenty twenty two dash o two as read by myself. Can I get a first and second? I'll make I'll that see. motion. I'll second. second. Okay, I now call for a vote of the Committee of Adjustment. Councillor Bongo? Four. Councillor Collins? Four. Councillor Florent? Four. Councillor Harper? Four. Councillor Shala? Four. Accepted with the conditions. So that ends the uh, public meeting for the um, applications today so um may i ask a quick question sorry tracy go ahead yes and i should have asked this when we were addressing the first um the first application but i got caught off guard um uh, you gave the pro provincial uh provisional excuse me consent with uh one of the conditions being a survey now this is a full lot so it would be lot 28 concession 8 um, would the entire lot need to be surveyed or can we just survey the little part of the, the right of way and then give a legal description for the rest of the lot? As long as there is a legal description that we can make one, that's okay. So okay. just the piece that's being severed off is fine. I've, yeah. So, but if we just, uh, just had the, the survey done for the right of way, but then gave the legal description for the rest of the lot to be severed, 
because it is a full lot 28. It is a full lot. Yeah. I can't. Yeah. I think that'd be fine as long as it shows the easement. It would just be very expensive to, uh, <laughs> to exactly. Yeah. And if everything is there, then I can't see there being a reason like that wouldn't work. Okay. Wonderful. Thank you very much. Yeah. Okay. So that adjourns me. I think everybody. Hi, this is oh, Kevin. Go ahead. I just got a really quick question before we finish up here. Sure. So this, this easement is still our property. So it's still private property. Correct. That's all I need to know. Yes. Okay. That's perfect. That's fine. That's all I need to know. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. It's still your property. Like Adrian said, it's still your property. You're just giving uh, Courtney access, legal yeah. access to cross it. Correct. No. So you guys are getting into all this public stuff about Wolf Lake Lane. So I was just making sure that, uh, that uh, this easement didn't carry on and people thought they could just carry on through our property. It's still our private property and that's all I, right? Correct? Yep. Yeah. Wolf okay. Lake Lane, anybody can travel it, but once it gets to your property, then that's your property. Yeah. Perfect. That's correct. That's fine. I'm good now. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> okay. And thank, thank you, Adrian. Courtney and Gord. Thank you. Thank you. See you, Courtney. Thanks. Take care. Okay, so we can move on to the next uh, portion of the agenda, Councillor Shala. Okay, uh, number six, planning and building administrator report, uh, planning act amendments. Uh, Tracy, I'll uh, let you go ahead with this. Thank you. Okay, so there was um, um, many amendments made to the planning act. Um, it took a long time for me to understand them, <laughs> as you can see, um, but they're pretty. Um, pretty uh, self-explanatory within the, the um, report. Um, like I said, with the delegation of additional decisions, I don't think that it's something that uh, we should, you know, we need to jump into right away. Maybe in the future, if council chooses to do, uh, to delegate that, that role, then uh, that can be um, updated within our official plan. Um, does anybody have questions about the first ones? Maybe I'll just go through um, each one. So the delegation of additional decisions, um, that's the where they can delegate the, uh, the delegate to a committee or employee or agent um, for minor amendments to zoning bylaws, temporary use bylaws, and or lifting holding provisions. So does everybody understand that or have any questions? All right. So um, as stated here previously, um, in order for a potential purchaser to, to um, apply for a consent, they had to act like an agent to the uh, owner. And now that has changed as long as they show proof that they have got an offer purchased and they can, they can now apply for a consent. And we've had that actually in the past. So that's nice to see. They've um, up the dis notice of decisions for consents have to be... Um, now done for two years instead of one year. I think the province is seeing that people are having a hard time getting surveyors to come in and, and for applicants to satisfy the conditions that's given by the committees. So that's uh, an additional year added on to that. So like I said, we had two that were, were done after November 2nd. So I've notified them of the extension. I don't think they're going to need it. They're pretty eager to get them completed. So, uh, but they have that time if, if required. So the merging of lands is kind of confusing. Um, essentially now, if um, say Brian and I were both on property A and he was only on property B and I passed away leaving just him on both properties, the properties will no longer merge on title. Uh, we've seen merging on titles a lot. Um, so hopefully this will eliminate some, some issues that we've you know, what we've had it's moving forward. It's not going to help the past ones, but hopefully it'll help the future ones. I think it's, I, uh, Tracy, I think it's very good. Um, we don't know how many of these are out there mm -hmm. and the possible, there's a good chance that s s the landowner might not even know until they go to do something with it. So I think it's very good. 
Yeah, we've also seen where where properties have different roll numbers, they have different legal descriptions. They they appear on paper to be separate, but when lawyers or, or anybody does a title search on them, it shows that they have merged. So we don't even know um, here at the office if if properties have merged on title. So yeah, it's 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 quite common in a lot of places that a lot of people don't even realize it's happened. Exactly. Yeah. The the part we've run, is, we've, the, I've run into it in numerous. Uh, it's my yeah. understanding from someone that just recently got rid of a property that he was getting two tax bills. Mm -hmm. That happens. Okay. He was getting two tax bills, but in the end, uh, it was when he went to get rid of the property, he found out that they had merged. So <laughs> obvious the township didn't know if they were, uh, they were getting the, he was getting his town tax bill from the township, but certainly wasn't aware of uh, the merging. So, they were able to sort it out. So, and that's the thing too that that as staff we struggle with a bit because now it's it's a big focus right now on using the pins, property identification numbers, and we don't have access to them. Um, we have access to the roles, and that's it. But if they one pin is created, then that's how we would be able to tell. But as staff, we don't have that ability to to look that up. So, consent cert certificates for retained lands. Um, Previously, they were only issued for severed lands, and now if the applicant wishes to receive that certificate for the retain, they can apply um, during the application period to request that additional certificate. Um, an owner of land can also um, request a cancellation or a certificate of can cancellation, and this would be commonly used in a situation where an owner has two properties um, that were conveyed by consent and now wishes those two properties to merge. Maybe they want to develop it in a way that it would be better as one piece. So I don't know if anybody else has any questions that, uh, about that, those changes. I'm constantly following them and learning about them. So it's, it's a great learning experience for sure. <laughs> Appreciate you bringing that to our attention, Tracy. Uh, other than that, we wouldn't even be aware. So uh, great, thanks. and. Uh, is there anything else? Thank you, Tracy. I don't have anything else. Um, next meetings, I'll probably be requesting one probably next month. Um, I have two applications that's probably going to be ready to go to the table, uh, one for sure. So it looks like uh, Canadian Adjustment's probably going to be running once a month for a while because it, the applications well, are coming in. It's better to get it moving. And not, not only that, it uh, likely phase it in gradually for surveyors, et cetera. So if, if necessary, rather than waiting and do, maybe doing it only two or three times a year. So I think it's the way to go. And people are excited once they agree to do something and they want to get it done. So yep. no problem. If we have to have a meeting, I think uh, I'm sure everybody should would agree that we should have it. Great. Thank you. Okay. Um, if there's uh, nothing, if there isn't anything else, maybe uh, I can get a mover to adjourn. I'll make that motion to adjourn. Moved by Councillor Florent. Well, second, second, the motion. Second by Councillor Harper. Thank you very much. And I guess we're going to move on to another meeting. Can we take a Couple minute break here. Yep. <coughs> oh, I need to drink water. Brian. Yes. Or is it going to remind you that this is a closed session just to go off of being live off of YouTube? Hey. Yeah, they'll need they'll need to call the meeting to order. Uh, oh, great! Yes, yeah, sorry, sorry.
Can I actually ask what we're we're waiting for here, Brian? Am I supposed to be chairing this, or or um, are, are you going to introduce this for us? Yeah, I, I think we did put this under administration, Councillor Collins. So I believe you're the chair of that meeting. Uh, but I do believe one of the councillors asked for a, a brief uh, uh, break uh, before we convene the meeting. Okay. Well, if it was, if it was I, myself, where I'm ready to go. Okay, I I am a little bit concerned here. I, I I'm traveling and uh, I've got very sketchy um, connectivity, and hence my my um my actual video is off. Um, if you lose me, then can someone else pick up the thread, please? Thank you. Okay, um, this is this is a meeting with regards to considering land claim information, which is going to close. So can I call the meeting to order, please? Um, Human Resources Admin meeting at 2.56, calling the meeting to order. Um, are there any additions or amendments to the agenda? I don't know where you're traveling, Councillor Collins, but it's <laughs> 9.56 here. <laughs> My Does that thought. give you a clue? <laughs> Does that give you a clue where I am? <laughs> Sorry, nine fifty-six. Um, are there any additions or amendments to the agenda? None noted. Can I have adoption of the agenda, please? Somebody to. I'll adopt the agenda. That's Councillor Harper. Thank you, and seconded by. I'll second it. Seconded by Councillor Schaller. Thank you very much. Before we continue, is there anybody that wishes to disclose a pecuniary interest in these matters? Okay, none noted. Um, and I would like to move <clears throat> into closed session to consider the matter that we have in front of us today. Um, so can I have a proposal to move into closed session? I'll make that motion. Thank you, I'll, I'll second Lauren. it. Thank you. Is